Welcome back. We come to the next part of our full custom IC layout design. In the first part, we saw how to do the cell floor plan. In this part, uh, section, we'll look at how we how to sketch the stick diagram. The stick diagram, the X is an interface between the symbolic circuit schematics and the actual layout. The, it helps us to quickly plan the relative placement of the devices, the layout and routing. It also provides us with a usual, uh, useful visualization of the interconnections, the how much we can compress or compact the design and the ground and power routing. The stick diagram also helps us to capture the topography and the layer information using simple diagrams and colored stick lines. Okay, one thing that the stick diagram doesn't do is that it shows you the exact placement. It is not the layout itself. It's just a plan of the layout. It doesn't show any transistor sizes, wire length, boundaries, or any the thing to do with the design rules. So it does. There's no geometrical the significance in the stick diagram. Okay, some rules that you follow, and it should help you to draw the stick diagram. When two or more sticks of the same color, huh, when it's the same color, that means it belongs to the same process layer. Yeah? Touch or cross each other, the two sticks are electrically connected. So for example, over here you see polysilicon, which is green. These two po polysilicon sticks are touching each other, so that means these two sticks are electrically connected to each other. Over here you see the metal lines that are cross crossing each other. The, because they are the same layer, there is electrical contact. Now, when two or more sticks of different colors cross or touch each other, there is no electrical connection. So in this case, you see your polysilicon and your metal, they seem to be touching, but because the, the metal is actually isolated from polysilicon by the field oxide, there is no electrical connection. Okay. Sorry. Let me see. Okay. And if we want to make electrical connection between the different layers, we need to put in a contact cut. So whenever you see a contact cut touching two different layers, that means that these two layers are connected. So in this case, the metal the metal and the polysilicon sticks are connected electrically to each other. Okay. Sticks representing P diffusion must never touch sticks representing N diffusion and vice versa. So you have here your P your N diffusion and your P diffusion. They should never touch each other. Alright. So this is wrong. Well, on this one, here you have P-diffusion and diffusion, they are separated. That's correct. Okay, when the poly stick crosses the diffusion stick, it represents a transistor. So, here you see the, gr the green polysilicon crosses, crosses the N plus diffusion, you get an N MOS. Okay, just to explain how that this happens, you look here, you have your green, your polysilicon, which is green here. And you have here your active, your N diffusion mass. Okay, by the polysilicon will also act as a mass. So as a result, you have N, N plus on the sides of the polysil polysilicon gate. So remember, just remember that the polysilicon stick crosses the N the diffusion stick, you get a transistor. 
Now in a NWL CMOS process, the dem demarc demarcation line or a box is drawn to enclose all PMOS transistors. So you see here your PMOS is include is enclosed or it sits inside the N well. And any N MOS is excluded from this N well. Okay, some examples of stick diagram. You see here two trans two NMOS transistors, they are connected in series. Alright, so that means source, drain, source and drain. So how do we draw the stick layout for this? We start with the diffusion. This NMOS, so we use N diffusion. And then we have two gates. So each gate is made of polysilicon. So here you have a polysilicon for gate A. And as we saw earlier, to make a transistor, the polysilicon must cross the diffusion. So we have one transistor, which is this one here. Now the second transistor, this one here, is formed by this polysilicon crossing over the diffusion. So the two ends, X and Y. So very simple. We now have drawn the stick layout for two transistors connected in series. How about this one here? where you have three transistors connected in series where is it? following the same method we have an end diffusion then we have our first polysilicon crossing over the diffusion to form this transistor then polysilicon for transistor B and finally polysilicon for transistor C okay. So the transistors in series tend to be a little easier. Now let's look at the transistors in parallel. Transistors in parallel, you have the, the two ends of the active areas are connected together. So here you see one active area, one set of active areas connected to X and the other set of active areas connected to Y. So let's look at, again, how we use how we draw the stick diagrams for this you have here an n diffusion okay a piece of n diffusion then again like before you have your polysilicon for transistor a and transistor b now the difference is in the connections all right so here between transistor A and A, B, the active areas will be joined to X. So that's what we have. You need to put in a contact there. The next, we will join this two active areas together. And that would form your Y. So that's what we do. And we put in the contacts again. So this is the stick diagram. For, par for two parallel transistors. How about this one here? Again, we have our end diffusion. Two transistors. X, the two active areas are connected together. And Y, this two, uh, the other two ends are connected together. What do you notice? These two are actually connected in the same manner. No? electrically connected in the same manner, just drawn differently in the schematics. Hence, they are, the, the stick diagrams are the same.